Hey everyone, it's Travis Michael. I'm working on this Dakin VRV4 system today. The purpose of this video is to show you guys how to put it into recovery and evacuation mode. If you're interested more on why that's necessary when working on one of these systems, uh, just stay tuned. Uh, that'll be at the end of the video, but let's jump right into it. First, you have to remove the access cover that's up here, which I already did. There is detailed instructions over here about how to put it into the refrigerant recovery operation or evacuation mode setting, but it's a little confusing and uh, I figured it'd be best to have just a video you guys can watch. So we're gonna start by checking out this. This is the switches that we are gonna operate and then that's this display screen that we're gonna see what mode it's in. And first we need to start by holding BS1, which is the mode switch. You hold that for five seconds. Now, once the two with the blinking zeros pops up, you're gonna hit BS2, the set button, and you have to set the zeros to 21. So basically, you gotta push it 21 times. If you go past it, you have to go all the way back to 99, so try to not pass it. Okay, so now once we have it set to 221, which you can see here, is that the refrigerant recovery operation evacuation mode setting, 221. We're gonna hit the return button, this BS3. So now, zero, the flashing zero basically indicates that it's off and we wanna activate, we wanna turn it on. And you can see that further down here. So, so what we need to do is go back to set button again, and push that to make it one. You can see here it says light off, light off, one is on. So once we do that, we hit B3 again, which is the third button. Now it took that, and now we have to hit that one more time. And when that displays, that means it's in the recovery mode, evacuation mode. You can actually hear the pressures equalizing out in the system. To return it to its initial setting to take it out of the mode, it's also detailed right here. You have to hit the return button, BS3, and the screen goes blank. So if you just hit mode button once, 100 means that it's in the normal mode. So that's where we're back where we want to be. If you ever do get confused when you're trying to set it or you mess something up and you're not in the right menu, all you have to do is hit the mode button once and that will bring you back to this beginning screen so you know say if you start changing something you go oh wait that's not where I'm supposed to be hit the mode button once and that will bring you back it's also explained here in case you want to read it so once you take it out of the recovery and evacuation mode it does take some time for the system to come back on it's been about 12 minutes and it's still not running yet um, I experienced this yesterday when I was out here working on it it was probably close to 20 minutes before it really came on. So don't start panicking, just, just give it some time, you know, make sure it comes back on. And, uh, but as long as you have that one with zero, zero in the display screen, it means it's normal operating mode. So it's also possible it's a low load conditions today that maybe it's not calling at the moment. All the zones might've satisfied. So I'm gonna go inside and check that out. But it, it, like I said, just don't panic, give it some time. So after waiting a little bit, I took a look at all the thermostats inside and they were actually all set in the fan mode. So I ended up just switching them back to auto and setting the, you know, my cooling set points down below. Like I said, today's kind of a no-load condition day. So, it, you know, pretty much the entire area was at set point. So just take a look at that when you take it out of the recovery mode. You know, otherwise you're going to sit around and wait for the unit to come back on and it's never going to come on because it ain't calling. So why exactly would we need to put it into this recovery evacuation mode? In my case, I was doing a leak repair on the system and there was a leak on one of the suction line flare fittings at an indoor unit. Um, basically, I wanted to recover the entire charge so I could weigh back in what we lost. You know, there was a leak. I wasn't sure how long it was leaking for. We don't know what was lost. But I know how much the system held. Uh, it was documented on the unit. And normally, that's general practice with these VRF systems or VRV systems. Different manufacturers call them different names. But when the manufacturers design these systems with the architects or whoever, the engineers involved, they come up with the diagram they measure all the piping, they take, uh, tra keep, they take into account all the elbows and the 
pretty much everything, all the components in the system, the air handlers, branch boxes, and, and they calculate pretty much to an exact uh, precise amount what the unit needs. So I knew that number. So knowing what charge we have and not knowing what leaked out, we don't know what to put back in. The only way to recover the entire charge is by putting it into this recovery evacuation mode. When you put it into this mode, all the valves in the system go open. Whether you have the branch control box and the expansion valves on your air handlers, everything is going to go open. So there's going to be no place where refrigerant can be trapped. Since there's, since there's no place for it to be trapped, we know we're getting everything out. This is also crucial when you're pressurizing with nitrogen. So you know you're pressurizing the entire system and the same thing when you're evacuating. You want to evacuate the entire system. If there's some refrigerant trapped somewhere, we're not sure how, how much is there. And then also if nitrogen happened to push through one of the valves, it didn't seat properly, you could contaminate your refrigerant. And when you go to run it, you have nothing but problems. When you're trying to evacuate, you're gonna have issues trying to evacuate. So you need to have it placed into this mode in order to do the correct job. The reason why it's so crucial to know exactly what charge you have in the system is because you're never gonna be able to troubleshoot these systems based off of pressures and temperatures. Um, you probably could if you had tech support on the phone, they'll tell you what to look at, but these are not going to run your traditional standard pressures that a conventional system is going to run, you know, that you just throw your gauges on, you know, either you're low or you're not. They're much more complicated. They have variable speed fan motors. They have variable speed compressors. They modulate their capacity down super low. They could probably run just one air handler that's, you know, 9,000 BTUs off of, uh, you know, a seven or eight ton condensing unit with none of the other zones are calling. So if you have a leak and you don't know what you lost, your best bet is to remove the entire charge and weigh it. And then weigh, you know, when you put it back in, weigh back in everything you need. This way you're back to where the factory wanted it at the beginning. Because usually, like I said, that, that charge is spot on. That's calculated you know, specifically for that system. So that's it. That's all I got for this one. If you're not currently a subscriber, please consider hitting that subscribe button. If you like the videos, give me a thumbs up. If you've got any questions, just comment down below. I'll get back to you. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one.